Let's go to Senator Rand Paul. And Senator, thank you. You are in the center of this. Uh, are you going to get cause a shutdown over this? Obviously, you've got till midnight. Is that your plan as of right now? No, not really. Uh, my plan is, or my position is, that uh, this issue is so big and so important that it deserves to be debated, that we shouldn't have a closed debate. And a closed debate is like when there are no amendments. I've offered my amendment. I've been pushing it all day long. An amendment vote takes about 15 minutes. So we've been about 10 hours with the leadership saying, oh, we won't allow any amendments. But I think it's a really terrible way to run your government, to put all the spending in one bill, but then say no amendments. The other thing is there's a huge hypocrisy factor here. Republicans lambasted President Obama to no end for trillion dollar deficits, and now they've put forward a trillion dollar deficit. And I don't know, I think the American people are gonna be surprised, upset, hurt, that the so-called conservatives got elected and then turned out to be not much different than the people they were criticizing. Well, I mean, at the very least, they are hypocrites, and there is no other word for it. Uh, whatever you think the solution might be, Senator, uh, you're right about that. There's no other way to describe it. I want to just play for everybody. Senator Paul Ryan, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. This is what they were saying when President Obama wanted to spend some money. Our debt is a threat to this country. We are on the verge of a debt crisis. Our debt, it's already bigger than our economy. Our debt, it's a sign of overreach. It's a sign that the federal government is doing too much. The national debt threatens our way of life. The Democrat spending spree has brought us to the brink of an economic calamity. Who proposes more spending as a solution to a debt crisis? Mitch McConnell and, and Paul Ryan do, Senator. I mean, it, it, the numbers here, right? 84% well, see, increase in borrowing in the first <laughs> fiscal year of the Trump administration, 50% right. increase again expected this year. Uh, budget cap's yeah. gone, sequester I, gone, $300 billion in additional spending over the next two years. What the heck happened to your party? I think this is what people don't like about politics. They see clips like that and they think, did they really mean it or were they just against President Obama because he was a Democrat? I'm one who actually did mean it because I thought debt was a problem and we had too much. But the only way for the American public to believe that some of us really believe it is to be consistent, you know, against debt, whether it's Democrat or Republican. And that's a real problem here is that Republicans have completely changed now and they said, a trillion dollar deficit was terrible under President Obama, but it's just fine if it's a Republican. And that's just not going to wash with people. And it really upsets me because there are many of us who truly are conservative, truly are worried about the debt, but are consistent. It doesn't matter which party is doing it. It's wrong. If it's wrong, it's wrong. And Senator, I, look, I commend you for your consistency on this. Let me give you a chance to explain something, though, that doesn't seem to fully add up uh, because you're making this impassioned argument. In December, though, you voted for the tax cut, which is projected, according to Republican numbers, to add a trillion and a half dollars to the national right. debt. So you were willing to add a trillion and a half for that, but now you're upset about $300 billion uh, over the next two years. How is that not hypocritical? Well, there's a couple things about cutting taxes. One, I believe that when you go out and work and you sweat and you work with your hands, that uh, what you earn is yours. You give up a small amount to be part of a civilized society, but you shouldn't have to give up half of your paycheck. And so I think we have to give up a lot of our liberty, too much of it. So I think people should be able to retain their liberty. So that's why I'm for tax cuts. But there also is a big debate over what tax cuts will do to the economy. If you say the economy is going to grow, oh, it's only going to grow at 1.9% then you might leave a big hole. What if it grows at 2.5 or 3.5? So there's a lot of things that actually are unknown that will happen from this tax cut. And I do think that in the end, the money is more wisely spent by the people who earned it than by the people who didn't earn it. But I'm consistently for a smaller government. So when I vote for a tax cut, I've always voted for a corresponding cut in spending as well. Are you concerned about where this president stands on this? This is a man who, after all, multiple times in multiple interviews, bragged about being the king of, king of debt, said, quote, right. I love debt. Nobody knows debt better than me. And now he's doing just that. Yeah, by the way, in his own companies, uh, declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy four times. It's a guy right. who knows debt, who has used and abused debt, and he's now running it up on the taxpayer tab. There's probably a lot of blame to go around, you know, for the Republicans who are advocating for this debt. But I would say really primarily, you know, this is coming from Congress. The leadership in Congress in both the House and the Senate has decided to move forward. But the funny thing is, you know, so often in the media we hear, oh, we want you to work together. Well, they are working together, but they're working together to spend a ton of money. So huh. I think bipartisan compromise is always, money. always what it's cracked up to be. It's easy to spend money you don't have when someone down the line is going to be responsible for paying the bill. Exactly. Senator Paul, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. And out front now, Stephen Moore.